Mahaba, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Doc Is In, where Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi's expert physicians and dedicated caregivers converge to explore the dynamic intersection of technology, compassionate care, and cutting edge research that help deliver the best patient care outcomes. Join us as we delve into the transformative advancements shaping the forefront of healthcare, sparking conversations that bridge innovation with patient centered excellence. So, whether you're a medical professional, science enthusiast, clinician, or just an avid podcast listener looking to expand your horizons, this podcast is for you. My name is Derek Keddington, and I'll be your host for today's episode, brought to you by the Fatima bin Mubarak Center here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Before we dive in, remember to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button as we are here to make The Doc Is In the number one podcast in healthcare. So whether you're about to buckle up for a drive, getting ready for a run, or warm up a cup of coffee, join us now as the doc is in. Here with me for today's episode um, is our esteemed colleague, Dr. Wassam Ahmed. Dr. Wassam is the chairman of medical oncology and hematology department at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. After completing medical school in Egypt, Dr. Wassam went to Brown University in the United States, where he completed an internal medicine residency Following his residency, Dr. Wassam completed a fellowship in hematology and oncology um, at Tufts Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts in the USA. And after that, Dr. Wassam went and completed a postdoctorate in cancer immunology from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, also in Boston. Um, before, the, before joining Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi um, in 2021, Dr. Wassam spent four years at Cleveland Clinic, Florida. Welcome, Dr. Wassam, to the Doc is In. We're excited to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. So for today's episode, um, we're going to be talking a lot about multiple myeloma and amyloidosis, um, something that I've been learning about over the last year or so as I've been working with you um, and our other colleagues. Um, but for our, our audience and our patients that may not know a little what multiple myeloma and amyloidosis are, can you explain in you know, simple terms what is multiple myeloma and amyloidosis? So multiple myeloma and amyloidosis are two types of blood cancers that originate from plasma cells. So to explain what multiple myeloma and amyloidosis are, let's first try to understand what plasma cell does. Okay. So plasma cell is one of your immune cells and their job is to make antibodies in case you have infection. So let's say someone gets flu or COVID these plasma cells will multiply in billions inside the body to make antibodies to kill the flu or the virus. Once the infection is over, these cells should not stay in the body because the body doesn't need it anymore. So there is a mechanism where these cells will die. Very small number of them will stay in case the same infection will happen again, so the response will be faster, but these cells should die. If one of these cells doesn't die and start to multiply to make more of itself, this is cancer. So how does this cause a problem? These cells come originally from the bone marrow, but they can go anywhere in the body because the immune cells can go anywhere in the body to fight infections. So they can grow in the bone marrow take over the bone marrow. The bone marrow is the kitchen where all the blood cells are made. Red blood cells that carry oxygen, white blood cells that fight infection, and platelets that stop the bleeding. So if these cells take over the bone marrow, the kitchen will not be working. So the patients will have anemia, will have weaker immune system, may even have low platelets that can lead to bleeding. In addition, I said initially that the plasma cells make the antibodies. These cancer cells will also make antibodies, but these are antibodies that the body doesn't need. So these are proteins that can be in the blood, can go to the kidneys, can hurt the kidneys. So this is the multiple myeloma, that these cells can grow, in, grow inside the bone. It can hurt the bone itself. It can cause lesions inside the bone. It can affect the ability of the bone marrow to make new cells. It can erode the bone, and this increase the level of the calcium in the blood, and this also can affect the kidneys and can, can affect other organs. 
and the proteins that are made in the body, this can hurt the kidneys. So this is the multiple myeloma. So what's the amyloidosis? The amyloidosis is the same mechanism, but for reason that we don't know, these proteins, the antibodies in the blood, they start to stick to each other and make something like very, very small fibers that can go to organs, precipitate there, and can cause organ damage. So these can go to the heart, okay. can go to the kidneys, can go to the nervous system, can go to the liver. So these are the two differences between multiple myeloma and amyloidosis. Thank you, that's very helpful. Um, and thanks for making it simple enough for me to, to grasp. Um, what are some of the common signs or symptoms of these two diseases? So let's go back and repeat what I said in a different way. So if these cells are growing inside the bone marrow, decreasing the ability of the bone marrow to make red blood cells, these are the cells that carry the oxygen, so the patient will have anemia no enough oxygen to supply the organs, so the patient will feel fatigued. And I don't want the audience to be scared because all of us experience fatigue. Yes. But the fatigue that I'm talking about is someone can walk for an hour, within a month or two can barely walk for 10 meters without have, being short of breath, something significant. So fatigue is one thing. Uh, the other thing is bone pain, because I said that these cells grow inside the bone marrow, mm -hmm. inside the bone, and they can erode the bone. It can also present with infections, because the immune system is weak. Bone, sometimes the patients present with bone fractures. If these lytic lesions will stay for a long time without being treated, the patient can present with fractures. Patient can present with renal failure with different symptoms related to the renal failure. This is the multiple myeloma. The amyloidosis, it depends on which organ is being affected. So if it's cardiac, exactly. it's different than if it's the, nephrology. Exactly, right? exactly, okay. exactly. Well, that's interesting. And I'm glad you brought up the part about fatigue because I, like you said, everyone's tired. And I think of, you know, having a six month at home, six month old at home, I'm often fatigued, but not to the extent that you're talking about. Let me interrupt you, <laughs> please, for just to clarify one thing. Bone pain. Yeah. Because also I don't want to scare the audience. All of us have bone pain, have back pain. So when, how do I know if this is related to multiple myeloma? Not my back pain that I had for 20 years. Yeah. Any significant change in the pain need to be addressed. So I have back pain, sometimes it comes and goes, gets worse with specific movements. This is very unlikely to be multiple myeloma. But all of a sudden, I started to feel sharp pain that I can point to with one finger in my, on my back. It needs to be addressed. It does not mean that it has to be multiple myeloma, yeah. but it needs to be addressed. So any significant change in the acuity of the pain or the location of the pain, or even radiation of the pain, the pain starts in one area and radiates to one area, uh, another area, this has to be addressed. Well, that makes sense, because uh, we all do have those aches and pains. Yes. And it gives us an idea of what's your baseline. Yes. And then is there a big deviation from that? Yes. So it's yes. very helpful for us. Um, how are multiple myeloma and amyloidosis typically diagnosed? Um, so, Especially with amyloidosis, we see a lot of patients who were struggling with symptoms for months and months because the diagnosis of amyloidosis was not expected by the physician because it's considered rare disease. But in general, we start with CBC, blood count, blood test. The blood test will tell me if any of the cells that are made in the kitchen, the bone marrow, are abnormal. If there is anemia, if there is abnormal platelets, white count is not normal. We start with this. Then the other type of blood test, it measures the kidney functions. I mentioned the kidneys multiple times, that there are things that can affect the kidneys. So we check the kidney functions. We check the calcium level. All this happens in the blood. 
uh, we do imaging studies. The imaging studies will tell us if there are any bone lesions, and sometimes we see that there is fractures either happen or gonna happen soon from the imaging studies. Sometimes we need to do biopsies, either bone marrow biopsy or in the amyloid doses, we get a biopsy from the organ that we think it's affected. So between biopsies, uh, imaging studies and blood tests, we can reach most of the diagnosis. The blood tests also can measure with very high accuracy the amount of proteins in the blood, which is indication of how active the disease is. The biopsies, we, uh, we look for the evidence of the disease, but also we do genetic testings that can guide us in the treatment in the future. Sounds like it's a comprehensive evaluation. You have your blood test, and if it's on different organs, you have different biopsies. Um, very grateful for our, our multidisciplinary team to be able to take care of our patients here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Um, so if I've been diagnosed with multiple myeloma or amyloidosis, what are my treatment options? What does it look like? For, if I, what can I expect from that? Definitely much, much better than the treatment options of patients who were diagnosed 20 years ago. Because over the last 20 years, there was significant improvement in the drugs that are available for the treatment of multiple myeloma. Uh, 20, 25 years ago, we were treating everything with chemotherapy. So older patients who cannot tolerate chemotherapy, they were not getting enough treatment. Now we have many drugs that are much more effective than chemotherapy and much safer and much well tolerated even by older patients. That's great. I do have patients who are 85 year old and they are receiving treatment and they are in remission. Wow. Uh, and every couple of months, there's a new drug uh, coming in the field of multiple myeloma. And the challenge 20 years ago that we didn't have good drugs. Now we have too many drugs and the challenge is how to choose the right combination of drugs that can fit every patient. Well, and that leads us to my next question. How, how do you make it personalized? Is there genetic testing or precision medicine? How does that fit in to the treatment of multiple myeloma and amyloidosis? So there are specific genetic changes in the myeloma that will make this disease more responding to specific drugs, which we do routine work now uh, with the new diagnosis that we have to include the genetic testing, and then we tailor the treatment based on that. That's awesome. It sounds like there's been tons of advancement in the last couple decades, which is great for, for us living right now and to be able to get that treatment. Um, so we've talked about what is multiple myeloma and amyloidosis, what are the signs or symptoms, how do I get diagnosed, how to get treated, um, and we offer this treatment here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Um, so what makes Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi unique in its treatment of multiple myeloma and amyloidosis? So, as you said in the beginning, before I came here, I came from a Cleveland Clinic, and I had the pleasure of working in many of the best cancer centers in the U.S. I can say for sure that the level of care that we provide to our patients here is not less than any big cancer center in the U.S., and I will explain why. So if you recall what I said, I mentioned multiple organs. I mentioned the bone marrow. I mentioned the bone. I mentioned kidneys, liver, heart, nervous system. All these things can be affected with either the multiple myeloma or amyloidosis. Let's talk about the heart, for example. If someone has heart failure from the amyloidosis, it needs to be, he needs to, he or she needs to be treated by us to control the disease, but it, they also need a cardiologist. They need a cardiologist who has experience with this specific disease. And this is very, very rare, very rare in the US and very rare everywhere in the world to have a cardiologist who has experience in blood cancers. So here we are very lucky in Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi that we have cardiologists who have experience 
with blood cancers. We have nephrologists who have experience. We have neurologists. We have hematopathologists who have experience in this disease. This is why we developed the multiple myeloma and amyloidosis program where all these doctors come together to take care of the patients. So if I see a patient in my clinic and this patient needs heart referral to cardiology, I will not send the patient to any cardiologist, although I trust all of them here, but not all of them have experience with blood cancers. Yeah. So we will refer them to our group who have experience to ensure that the one who is taking care of the patient has the highest experience in this area, so the outcome will be better. Well, that's great. And having gone to work alongside some of these colleagues, I can say that they are some of the, the brightest minds, and, and not only that, but, but good people that care about our patients. Um, it's a, pr a privilege to work beside you guys. Um, do you have anything else you want to add for our listeners before we wrap up for the day? So I just want to say that I'm very happy that we have this program because our patients, most of the patients don't need all this army of physicians. And most of the patients will be treated and everything will be fine with them and you tolerate the symptoms and we will control the disease. But those who need higher level of expertise, we are here. We are proud that we are the only center actually in the area that has all this expertise under one roof. Well, thank you for that. So if any of you are wondering or have questions about multimyeloma or amyloidosis um, or family members, feel free to reach out to us um, by phone or go to clevelandclinicabudabi.ae to schedule an appointment. Thank you so much, Dr. Bassam, for You're being welcome. with us today. Um, and as always, take well, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.